are listening to the most original talk radio station anywhere. We are L.A. Talk Radio at latalkradio.com. You're listening to Question Reality. Question Reality. With Priscilla Leona. Priscilla Leona. Only on L.A. Talk Radio. Hi, welcome to Question Reality. I'm your host, Priscilla Leona, and we are coming to you live from Studio City, California. Our show is broadcast every Sunday from 5 p.m. to 5.50 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If this is your first time tuning in, our show will help you question your career reality. This show is for you if you were are or might be considering a career in the entertainment industry. Our guest will provide advice, resource information on how and what it takes to successfully pursue a career in show business. Our guests work in various professions of entertainment, so that means that we will definitely have someone on the show sooner or later from a career that you are interested. If you want to check out our past guests, read their bios, listen to their interview instantly, or download one of the shows, you want to go to the LA Talk Radio website. If you're listening to us now, a big clue, you're already there, uh, but the website address is latalkradio.com. You click on the link at the top of the website that says Channel One, scroll down and look for the graphic of our show, Question Reality, and click the link. Now, this takes you directly to our archive page where you can view the list of our past guests. Our shows are also available for download on iTunes under the podcast section. Just type in Question Reality Radio in the search box. If you want to find out about our future guests, you want to visit our official Question Reality website, and that address is questionreality.us. Questionreality.us, not .com, U.S. for United States. And uh, we have a fantastic guest for you today. His name is William Constantine. We are so excited to have him on the show. He is a psychic, a medium, a psychic counselor, a spiritual counselor. And we are going to be talking to him a little later. But I want to uh, have you visit his website right now while I'm going because you know I have to do my advertisements. We all got to get paid. We need some bread and butter. So we got to do some advertisement. Um, but what's great about the advertisements is that it is all for you people in the entertainment business. I only do advertisements that are related to things that are for our actors, our directors, our producers, anyone in entertainment. That's what the advertisements will be. So let's visit uh, William's website. The website address is psychicwilliamconstantine.com. P S Y C H I C W I L L I A M C O N S T A N T I N E. Wow, that's really long. PsychicWilliamConstantine.com. So you can go there now and check him out uh, while we tell you about these wonderful things. Now, before I we get into the advertisements, I just want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Yay! Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas are my favorite favorite holidays. I just love, love, love this time of year. I just wish that it would snow in Los Angeles. I love snow. But what are you going to do, right? You got everything else. Uh, At least I'm thrilled to have my Christmas tree up as of yesterday. Albert and I launched the tree yesterday and I had to whip, honey, I had to whip out my MacGyver skills because the base of our tree was missing in action thanks to Albert from last year packing it so I had to come up with the idea of cutting a hole in the styrofoam uh, cooler and putting the Christmas tree base through there and then I used a red belt for one of Albert's robes and tied it around the tree and then tacked it into the wall it doesn't look bad you wouldn't even know you were looking at anything that was MacGyver like because I've got a nice foam I mean a nice little wrap around the bottom and ah, it looks beautiful 
possible. So now all it needs is big Christmas presents underneath and my heart will be content. So yay. Um, let's get on with the show because we have got so many things to talk about. I have some very cool classes to tell you about if you are an actor this week. The first one, get your pins. Uh, well, first of all, you know when you watch, listen to this show, you need to get your pen and paper because we have things going on. So get your pen and paper right now. The first thing is from AIA Actor Studio. Now, everybody is buzzing about the AIA Actor Studio free industry, uh, I can't even talk, free industry workshop series. And here's the scoop. Every month they have a free industry workshop with some of the top names in town. And it's totally free. And these workshops, you can perform scenes, get a video of your performance, uh, and you can network with some really great people. Now, who's coming? Sharon Paz is coming. She's currently a theatrical agent at the Abrams Artist Agency. And she is a graduate of the Tisch School at NYU. And having been an actor herself, she founded in 1977 the Abrams Artist Agency. Um, it's a it's a mid level bi coastal agency, and it reps about 150 actors. So, very exclusive, very boutique agency. Now, when is Sharon Paz coming? She is coming on December the second at 7:30. December the second at 7:30. So, um, you definitely want to get over to the AIA Actor Studio now. <clears throat> Uh, some of the other uh, upcoming uh, instructors are going to be uh, Gary uh, Zuckerbrod. He uh, cast for Without a Trace. He did Pulp Fiction, uh, CSA, Prez, uh, Chuck McCollum. He did Orphan, Jonah, Vocadia, Tim Payne, uh, Crash, King of Queens, uh, Deb Barliski, Arrested Development, Home Improvement, and the House of Representatives agent Tim Weissman is going to be there. So you want to go to their website site and, and check it out. Um, note that the instructors, you know, it, it, it's subject to change because, you know, it is Hollywood. So you want to go to uh, their website and get more details. And if you want to take one of these great workshops, you do have to audition and be accepted at AIA. So instructions on how to enroll will be sent to you via email. So go to their website, aiastudios.com, aiastudios.com. And all of the details uh, are on there, how to go about um, submitting and how to uh, set up an appointment, etc. Now, next, we have Actors Creative Workshop. Actors Creative Workshop. Now, they are now registering. Um, it's, a, it's a casting intensive with casting director Erica Silverman. This is a three-week casting intensive. It's Monday, um, starts tomorrow night. So if you're interested, you better get on it. They still have positions available, um, seats available. Uh, 1122, Monday, 1129, and December the 6th, starting at 730. It's only $175. You um, can, I think they have payment, a payment plan. But you want to go to actorscreativeworkshop.com. That's A-C-T-O-R-S-C-R-E-A-T-I-V-E. W O R K S H O P dot com, actors creative workshop dot com. Now, real quick about the class, Erica will be using her years of experience to help you understand the audition process and specifically how her office works and the best ways to get on their radar. And she'll be giving you scenes to prepare, then redirecting your work with you know, helpful hints and 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 things to help you look for the best performance. So bring your questions. Erica loves actors to ask questions and she will definitely help you uh, with any questions that you may have about yourself. You can check her out on IMDb. She's on, her credits are on IMDb. And again, that is Erica Silverman. Um, she's been casting, just real quick, she's been casting for the past seven years, during which time she had the opportunity to work for like a myriad on a myriad of projects. And some of the titles she worked on, uh, Criminal Minds, Threat 
threshold, uh, fringe, blade, the series, Washington Field, blah, 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 just on and on and on. She's now working as a casting director on the highly anticipated spinoff to one of her previous shows. And she has also served as casting director on the features The Attic Door, Acts of Mercy, Normal Again, and The Chicago 8. And um, Erica has branched uh, into the internet world, and she's casting web series. Currently, it's a uh, production called Action Auto, and uh, the it's an award-winning series, uh, Turbo Dates, that she's doing as well. So she also ventured back into theater. So she's working closely with the Blank Theater Company in Los Angeles on several of their shows. So you never know. You go there, she sees your skills, you might... Yeah, she might cast you for one of these things. Who knows? You never know what's going to happen. So she's very, 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 very nice. I hear really kind and wonderful things about her. So lastly, we have Actors West. Actors West. Now, as you know, pilot season is coming. And some of the casting directors that they've had in at Actors West are, um, I'm just, there's tons of them, but, you know, they've had Andy Henry, Brad Gilmore, Bridget Glover, White, Carol Goldwasser, Chad Wickstruck, Corbin Bronson. I love him. It, we, he is so nice. I actually took a class that he was doing over at Signature Studios, and I kept calling him Corbin Benson. <laughs> I just couldn't stop it. Um, let's see, Craig uh, Campobasso, Dan Shaner, oh my God, Fern Campion, uh, Champion, I always call her Campion, Harriet Greenspan, uh, Howard Meltzer, and you know, if you're in the business, you're very familiar with these names, uh, Rick Masler, uh, Ruth Lambert, Sherry Henderson, Susan Glicksman, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, all the top, top, top casting directors. So their upcoming events are as follows. Get that pen ready because this is going to go real fast. Intensive with Harriet Greenspan, uh, Nickelodeon Kids and Teen Casting Director. Two sessions. Harriet is casting currently True Jackson VP. Her class is Saturday, December the 4th. And uh, next, Scott David, Sunday, December the 5th, 10 a.m., $79. He's currently casting for Criminal Minds, Leverage, and Two Huge Features. Features. Tuesday, December 7th at 7.30, casting workshop with executive producer and casting director Dean Frank. $35. December the 8th, Wednesday casting director and producer Dan Velez, 7.30 p.m., $29. Um, on Thursday, December the 9th, there's going to be four agents managers, okay? Thursday, December 9th, 7 p.m., it's only $39. Oh, my God. All ages. You can even bring kids. There's going to be Bonnie Howard. She's the owner of Howard Talent West. Amy Mac Macnow manager symmetry entertainment chris peters co-owner agent iconoblast talent management nancy moon broad street agent at the geds agency next jason kennedy he's a casting for ncis and ncis to la saturday december 11th 230 39 dollars eric and Solier, Sunday, December 12th, two sessions, 10 a.m. and 12.30, $39. Uh, Annie Avetyan from Bruce Newberg's office, Tuesday, December 14th, $7.30, $35. Jamie Castro from Linda Lowey and John Brace's office, Thursday, December 16th at 7.30, $35. And they're currently casting Friday, uh, Friday Night Lights, Big Love, Trauma, Private Pat practice and battleship uh saturday december 18th 10 a.m casting workshop with chris garrett from uh, one of the busiest offices for casting tv 29 dollars. casting directors intensive with fern ornstein she's the vp of casting at cbs uh she's having an intensive over two nights 89 dollars for both nights that is a deal that is wednesday january 19th and wednesday january uh 26 so start saving 
And lastly, Lindsay, her name, oh, I can never say this name, Lindsay Jamieson from Jennifer Cooper Casting. And they're currently casting for Hawaii 50 CSI New York. And that is Saturday, February 5th at 11 a.m., $35. So if you want to see all of those dates on the calendar because you just couldn't uh, take shorthand in school, you want to go to actorswest.com, Actors west.com a-c-t-o-r-s-w-e-s-t.com and actors west um as you know they started actors west to help their friends and fellow actors and they are really sad by the trend of other workshop locations who are raising prices and charging monthly fees you do not have to go to these places do not do it this makes it really hard for you to invest in your career you know you have to update headshots pay for classes and all of those things because that's how you become successful. So this workshop, you know, they feel that they're just one small tool in your toolbox, but a very important one. So at Actors West, they do not charge a monthly fee and their workshops are 30 to 70% less than other places. So you definitely want to check them out. And that is ActorsWest.com. So, woo! Lots of things going on, but finally, oh, and lastly, they are bonded. Actors West is bonded and in full compliance with the California Code. So you can find all of that on their website. Woo! Now that we got that out of the way, there's no excuse for you to not say, oh, I don't know where any classes are. Where are the classes? Because I gave you classes all the way up till February. So start saving your money. All right. Now we are going to get back. You've had time to look over William Constantine's website and and now we are going to find out just a little bit about them. I'm going to give you some quotes um, about William Constantine. Let's see. William Constantine is a highly sought after, internationally acclaimed psychic medium, spiritual and psychic counselor, a top executive of the Rachel Ray show dubbed William greatest psychic medium the world has ever known. Now, we're going to talk about that. Wow. Uh, next quote. William Constantine is the real deal, a psychic medium who delivers accurate messages in a thoughtful, compassionate way. With a profound understanding of death and loss, he generally cares about his clients and the healing process. And that was said by Ant, who was the host of the VH1 reality series Celebrity Fit Club and the star of the television series U.S. of Ant, which uh, debuted on MTV's Logo Channel. Next quote. Thanks so much for the incredible read, William. With the public eye, there are believers in the psychic realm and skeptics. You can make a believer out of anyone. I was very impressed with your reading, your clarity on many of my life issues and advance warnings in some cases. You will definitely be my preferred psychic advice provider. You don't just tell people what they want to hear. You speak truth. For that, I thank you. And that quote came from Julie Christina, actress model on CW's One Tree Hill. So, wow, those are pretty impressive quotes by pretty impressive people. So, my goodness gracious, we have to find out about that. Are you there, William Constantine? Receiver Absolutely. of all of these quotes? <laughs> Absolutely. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's uh, it's actually been an honor to actually meet all of the, you know, the people and actually be able to read a lot of the people that I've read for. So, you know, I always find that, um, you know, even nerve wracking for me, even though I've been reading for different celebrities and so on and so forth, when it, it always is weird when you find yourself, you know, on the phone with a celebrity and, and they have normal issues just like everybody else, because, you know, even me, I, I sort of put them on that little bit of a pedestal, and then it's like, oh, wait, you're just as normal as, as I am. So, you know, it's it's one of those things that you really begin to actually connect with them on a personal level rather than just, you know, uh, idolizing them. Of course, they're just little humans, too. We're all little human <laughs> beings, right? <laughs> yep. Now, let me start out. I start every show out with this question because everyone wants to know uh, where did the person get 
where did what did the person want to do? So my question is, what did you want to do or be when you were a child? A writer. Oh, I've writer. always want yeah yeah I've always wanted to be a writer and and um, it was funny because prior to Sidney Sheldon passing, I had actually sent him a couple of uh, chapters of my manuscript and he actually replied back in an email saying that I had what it take, uh, took to be a novelist. Uh, but then my career shifted as I started to do the the mediumship thing more as a full time thing rather than you know a side freak show. Now, when and how did you first know about your powers? <laughs> Power. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I mean, uh, you can tell I've been watching Charmed for too long, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I would say that I've always known that I was different. And ever since I was a little kid, I always had the ability to see spirits, though at the time I didn't necessarily know what they were. I just thought that everybody had the ability to see them. Probably when I was about seven and I was adopted and I was going to school, maybe a couple of years after that, um, I was in my elementary school, and I had seen uh, my assistant or the principal basically all throughout the day reminding me about an after-school meeting that I had with him about a play that I was going to be in uh, because we were harmonizing uh, this play, and I had a meeting with him. And so when I went into the office, the office staff basically told me that he wasn't there all day, that Mr. Dobus was not there, that he never was there that day. And I argued with them like any seven-year-old would do, and then I went home, uh, upset and, and irritated. And uh, I came back the next day, and they announced the first thing in the morning that he had passed the day before of a brain aneurysm uh, in his office. And that was that the, the, pre the day that I saw him all day. And that was at the time where I knew that, wait a second, I I'm seeing something that obviously – not everybody sees because of the issue that he was gone. Um, now, isn't, and he was in isn't that, isn't that just, I mean, at seven years old, were you scared when you, when you found that out? Did you run to your, to your parents and say, this is what happened? I just saw him or what did you do? Well, no, because, uh, you know, honestly, at that age, you know that nobody is going to believe you, and you just think that maybe it was a once-in-a-lifetime type of thing. However, I was connected to spirits for a while, and I had seen him, and he felt the same way that all spirits feel to me. So for me, I knew that it was something that I always had, and it wasn't necessarily something that I wanted to express to people at that time. Uh, and like, I think a lot of famous mediums tend to run from the ability initially. And, you know, I, I did the same thing. I was no different. I just kept it a secret and sort of suppressed it. Of course, you had your, you know, slip of the tongues that happen every once in a while. But I uh, was adopted into a very skeptical family. Uh, there was no um, talking about it. So it, it just was not an option for me to well, talk about my ability. I know exactly what you're talking about because – and I'm just – I can't tell you how excited I am to be talking to you because I – have recently become addicted to this show uh, on Bravo and A and E. Uh, &E. It comes on Bravo and A and E, and it's called Psychic Kids: Children of the Paranormal. And it has this guy named Chip Coffee. Are you familiar with this show? I, I I am sadly yes. And well, Chip Coffee he calls himself a psychic medium, and uh, for people who don't know, and he and a certified child psychologist they scour the country looking for psychic kids to try to heal them, de uh, try to help them deal with their abilities. And these kids usually say that they see dead people, dead animals that usually try to communicate with them and sometimes try to hurt or scare them. So my question is, what do you think about uh, this type of show or field uh, of psychic claims? Well, you know, it, it's it's a very difficult uh, position because I think that um, it, it, it's really tough because of the fact that you're dealing with children 
and who may have uh, or, or who may be misunderstanding the way that messages are coming or the way that spirits are coming to them. And so it's a very difficult thing to be able to assess just by watching the television show. Uh, and one thing, the reason why I said sadly is because one thing that I noticed within the show is they actually take the kids into like a haunted house. Uh, and I just could reflect back on when I was like a kid. Um, and I had this ability and I still have it. I just couldn't, I wouldn't be ready to go into a haunted house and talk to spirits of that nature that may have died of, you know, a dramatic death or, uh, you, you know, whether it's murder or suicide or, you know, some type of death that they shouldn't necessarily be subjected to. I think that it would be a far better show if it was about uh, helping that person deal with their ability and helping that person hone their ability and learn to live with the ability versus, uh, you, you know, to basically use them as a sideshow to, uh, you know, promote a show. Yeah, I, 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 I love the show, but I too feel that it's a little weird to be taking these kids who pretty much say that they've been ostracized from sometimes their families, definitely from their schools, from their friends. And, while I love the theory, the concept of being able or, tr or them trying to help because they do have a, a psychologist, which which accompanies the, the chip coffee guy who's the psychic medium. Um, I do think it's a little weird to be throwing the kids into those situations right away. And then I thought, well, I, I don't know. It started to get a little too weird for me when they have the other psychic come they'll have uh, uh, like there was a woman who came and she said that she was teaching you how to build a wall a white white light around you and once you put the white light around you that you were safe from the spirits and then he has uh, the children saying go away you're not wanted and then all of a sudden the children say now I don't know if it's real or not because all of a sudden the children say that they feel happy at the end of the show they feel happy they're not scared anymore they feel in control they learn to go on and help police with investigations for lost people or missing people and my question is do you think that these stories are real that these children in this limited time are able to get some kind of 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 hold on their abilities from from this show no uh, i mean it's taken me a lifetime to hone my ability, and I continue to hone it to this day. So to be filming for whatever it is a couple of days, there's no way that somebody could help you that much to get a hold and a grasp on the ability. And why also would a police department be working with – I mean, they're very – they have what, what's called the, the wall of blue, you know, and they don't like calling in other people on cases, first of all, at least of all a psychic. So – the select few that actually work with police have either done so by knowing a, a police officer or an FBI agent or something like that, or they've got in by being hired from the family or asked by the family to, to come in. Because I don't believe that any missing person case should be a fee for the psychic. I just don't believe. I think that if somebody is missing or if somebody is murdered or whatever, I don't think that the psychic should be making money to help on police cases. But the second thing is, is, you know, I don't I can't see or fathom a police department taking on a kid uh, who who's maybe what, 12 and asking them to take on a missing person who could have been molested and killed in a brutal fashion or raped or, or whatever. Like, that's just not visions that you're going to want to, as an ethical psychic, put a child in um in basically having, you know, because I didn't like those visions when I had those when I was a when I, when I was a child. But um, you know, to be another psychic, putting kids, you, you know, who you should be able to empathize with, having grown up psychic, uh, you, you know, into these scenarios, I just I, I I don't like it. I don't like the show. I don't like what he's doing. I think that he could have done it in a lot better of a way and really helped the kids in a profound way rather than put them in harm's way. Yeah, I, I, I was 
was just surprised that the parents actually allow that that to happen. But I, I, it leads me back to to wonder: Are these actors? You know, do you think these are like actors? These kids are actors, and the parents are actors. I'm torn on that because I really. Uh, like the whole concept of wanting to help the children, but I think, mm, I don't know, how could they get, how could they feel such relief and, and not be scared and have all of these things solved in a weekend? It just doesn't seem normal. You know what I mean? I mean it, it is, yeah, I mean, it isn't normal. Like I said, I mean, it's taking me Do you me think my they're ability. actors? It's just a show that they're just be, actors? Or, or do you really think these are real people? Because if they're real people, then why would they say that at the, you know, that they're being helped and that they don't see the spirits anymore and they're in control? I mean, I, I, I just don't know what to think. It, it kind of, it kind of makes me wonder What's going on? I don't know. What What's your theory on it? My theory is just like a, you know, a well-rehearsed client for an attorney. I think the same thing is true with these children. I mean, I've watched, uh, my fiance was watching one of the shows one day, and um, I had her turn it off because I just couldn't listen to it. But mm -hmm. one of it, well, you know, within this one episode, uh, Chip Coffee was sitting next to a, a cabinet and there was these little girls or a little girl and a little boy I don't know um, and basically they were saying that they saw this lady but the cabinet just so happened to be next to chip coffee and, and it, the door opened and the kids screamed now to me if I were to see a spirit open a cabinet there's nothing scary about that like I wouldn't I wouldn't have lost my mind and started screaming because right. it would be like it'd be like seeing your grandmother open up the cabinet do you scream no right. you know you you just I mean it's something that you just normally look at and say oh okay and mm -hmm. you know but so that reaction sort of got to me and even with that they still taunt the spirits and I never understood you know taunting spirits uh, because I think if you if you're a psychic and you, or if you're a medium rather and you're and you have the ability to communicate with them, why wouldn't you talk to them like you would anybody else if you have right. the ability to see them or communicate with them in some fashion? So right. you know you know insulting them and you know and um, you going know. in their space. It's like they don't want you in their space. I mean, if there are spirits, I'm not saying I believe, but if there are spirits, I mean, why are you going to go up? space i don't know i don't know. but what about the equipment that they use they have those like geiger counters or i don't know what what do you feel about those do you think those are real i mean can they really uh detect a a, a different level of energy I think, I mean, I, they, I don't know. I'm not a ghost hunter. I, I'm a psychic medium, which means that I don't need the equipment because I am the equipment. And, ah. um, you know, so for me, it, I never really had to go with a team that used the equipment and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And there tends to be this disharmony in the industry with psychic mediums and ghost hunters. You right. know, uh, and, and that's the one thing that I think is so screwed up about this industry is I would think that if you had somebody who was a medium and who could communicate with the spirit, why wouldn't you then take your equipment and use that to validate what the medium is saying? Right. You know, if, in other words, if the medium says that there's a spirit standing over here in this corner of the room, then you go and you scan everything to see if the equipment works or what if you get a reading or whatever it is that the equipment does? I don't know. I'm not an expert on that. But yeah, I, 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 I just thought that that's just crazy having those kids play with those things. And, and oh, it's just not. So let me ask you, is there, you had said earlier, uh, and, and I agree with you, that there, they should be trying to help the children deal more with seeing spirits uh, because that and how to deal with their peers and how to deal with their family members it to your to the best of your knowledge is there a psychic school or a place where people with abilities can go to learn to deal with their unique lives sort of like you know on x-men where he has that sanctuary place that teaches them how to deal with their powers I know of a couple of schools that I don't know the names of them off the top of my head, but I do know that there is a school in, I think, Mass that, that deals with what's considered star children or indigo children, which is basically 
uh, psychic sensitive children, um, and they help them, you know, cope with the ability and, and really learn how to, you know, intermingle uh, with society versus, which is what you really need. Like, I would have rather had somebody like that in my corner versus skeptical parents or, you know, just people that you couldn't necessarily uh, talk to. Because for me, having the ability is very much myself. Like, it's, you, there is no separation between myself and the ability. Like, I go to the drive through I see spirits. I go to the library, I see spirits. I go to the mall, even more spirits. I go to the movie, there's spirits. So everywhere I go, there's spirits. So it's not like I flick a switch. This is what gets me with some of these shows that are out is, you know, some people, you know, say that you're able to just turn it on and turn it off. Not me. You know, I get up in the middle of the night and, you know, and I'm talking to them for three, four hours and then I go back to bed and then, you know, I'm up at six o'clock in the morning, if not earlier, and I start the day all over again with clients and so on and so forth. So, you, you know, I tend to believe that there are some schools out there, not to the caliber that you're say, that you're wishing for, though. Now, now I, I noticed that on the show, which is a, my only reference, because I normally honestly don't watch these shows. I just happen to be doing work and had the show on in the background, and then I kind of got hooked. But um, on the show, uh, the children say that they see spirits in different in different ways. Like one child says that the, the, the spirit is pixelated. And then another one says it's just uh, dots of white light. And then another one says they can see the person as clearly as if they're looking at another person. Is that true? And if so, how do you see your spirits? Well, I see spirits like I see the living. So, um, but that's taken a while. When, when I was a child at night and only at night, you remember when you used to hold your breath and then open your eyes and you'd see all these dots all over the place? Yes. Well, for me, that's how it would come at night. That's how spirits would come at night, but the dots would form figures. But it was a way so that I would be comfortable with the midnight visitations, which has happened my whole entire life. Now, to say that they're pixelated, I can't see it child using the term pixelated they did but, on the psychic show yes they did well, yeah but, yeah, but I, I mean obviously somebody provided that word right you know right, because right. it's not you know it's not something i mean pixelation is something that you when you're dealing with you know computer graphics exactly. and unless you're in the graphics department you know there's no way that you're gonna really connect with that that yeah. word mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but um so you, you know, and the dots of white light could have been similar to holding your breath and so on and so forth. But, you know, yeah, I mean, different psychics have, like, some people just tend to sense spirits. Some don't even see them. Some smell them, you know, and don't see them or hear them, you know. And so they're, it's sort of some just like little snippets of movies, you know. And so the, the, the ability is different for everybody. I can't tell you how, I you know, see. another psychic sees something, but... You That's know, what I, mean, I suspected. I suspected that people interpret it differently. I did. Now, let me ask you what if you for the people who see spirits in full form and look completely like a living human being, how are you able to tell who's living and who's dead? How do you know? Well, sometimes I don't, to be honest with you. Sometimes I don't. But the other the other thing is is there tends to be for me there tends to be a different feeling with when I'm dealing with the spirit world like it's it's usually like a more warmer compassionate feeling and it's uh and I tend to get warm like physically warm if I'm in other words if I'm doing a gallery reading which is what you see John and we're doing on TV and so on and so forth I tend to run very hot you know because when because spirits vibrate at a higher level of energy so you have to raise your level of energy to intermingle with them and get the messages clearly. So obviously with your energy raised, then you're going to be hotter and run warmer and so on. So I mean, do, when they talk, do they sound just like an, if they were living, you hear a vocalization or is it more a psychic thing? Like they don't say anything, their mouth doesn't move, but you're, you read them psychically or do they just open up their mouth and talk? 
Well, it happens in several different ways. It's, it's sometimes like playing charades with the spirit world. Sometimes it's a matter of they're, they're vocalizing specific verbiage. Other times they're giving you uh, a visual or um, a vision of a particular event that maybe happened after their passing, prior to their passing, maybe at their passing. And so it's like watching a little home movie. Other times they send you telepathic messages basically just where a thought somehow just pops in your brain and then you deliver that message the the problem where error comes in is when that particular psychic medium whoever it is is trying to interpret the message see the message isn't for us it's for the client so when you just deliver the message as it comes then the client it makes a lot more sense for the client and so you, you know that's one of the biggest things that i see where error comes in is when you're trying to use uh, and, and to translate what this what this vi movie is, because you really have no idea what you know. It could be their favorite memory. It could you you know. So I just describe what it is that I'm seeing, and that person's supposed to make the connection, not me. What? Why? <clears throat> what? Why would a person come to? What would be some of the reasons that a person would come to you to seek your? Uh, services as a spiritual psychic counselor? Well, I mean, it, to really get through grief, you know, because a lot of people tend to not know how to handle the loss of a loved one or the loss of a pet or, uh, you, you know, even something, maybe a past, uh, an issue that happened in the past, uh, you, you know, and so they would come to somebody like myself and I would be able to help them because I've been through the, uh, a gamut of different scenarios and, and things like that. So intuitively, I, I would be able to help them as well as if, if the spirit world or angels or ascended masters had anything to say, I'd be able to deliver those messages. But, you know, the biggest thing is, is grief counseling, you know, and to be able to help them get through loss or depression and, and really rise above it all and see it in a positive rather than um, a, a negative, like, because the problem with the loss of a loved one is we see loss versus what that other person has gained, you know, for the fact that they're back to their normal health, you know, they're, they're most likely younger because you tend to regress to the age that you feel the best. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's different. And children that I've talked to that have been either aborted or miscarried end up growing up on the other side. So I have to give like an age range and say like I see a seven-year-old that, you know, um, was either a product of a miscarriage or abortion. And then that person has to calculate back seven years ago to figure out who I'm, whose child I'm with. So, now, question, if they, what, I mean, when, if they come to you to deal with grief or loss of a, uh, of, of a person or a pet, uh, I guess it would be more uh, harder with a pet, but uh, what, what's, to, how can they be guaranteed that they are actually going to get a message from that person? I mean, is it always like a hundred percent that you're going to be able to uh, connect with that person? I mean, do all spirits that die just hang around the person or do you have to like pull them in from somewhere or, you know, wh well, where I mean I mean, here's the thing, like, there is no, there's not 100% in anything in life, right? So that's right. the first thing. But this, this is death. Thing. But this is death. death. <laughs> well, well, yeah, but, but death isn't even 100% because oh. death is an illusion, right? So uh, because if I can talk to people after they quote unquote died, then death doesn't exist, right? So now we're into the next realm of things, which is living from spirit. Now, the, the, re, the regards to what to your question is, I can't guarantee that Uncle Joe is going to come through for you. <laughs> However, you know, I could, I can, you know, guarantee that somebody is going to come through for you, and that you're going to get a message from somebody. Uh -huh. uh, and you know, and and it's just whether or not you, uh, because sometimes we want so badly to hear from one specific spirit that we ignore what the other spirits are saying. Like, in other words, Aunt Jemima might be coming through, trying to give you a message, 
you know, beating you up over the side of the head with uh, the newspaper, and you're not necessarily listening because you're holding tight for Uncle Joe to come through, you know, about a specific validation, or you're trying to get closure in that way. You know, I think the most profound thing that a medium can do is really provide closure. You know, for example, sometimes we're not at the death scene where somebody dies. And sometimes we don't, we have those unfinished words that we haven't necessarily been able to set. Or maybe, maybe we were estranged from that person, you know, and, and the medium is able to help clear the air and really, you know, mend old wounds. Uh, that's really what I try to do. I can't guarantee that, you know, Uncle Joe or Aunt Sally or, you know, um, anybody come through. It's, it's just a matter of I just communicate with whatever spirit comes through and it, it is what it is. And then you just make the connections. So are you saying that all of these, so the, are you saying that when we die, we are earthbound and we're just roaming around the earth waiting for psychics to connect a, to a, connect to us to talk? That I, there's no, saying, there, no heaven, no hell? Just No, I'm saying that, I'm, I'm saying that, okay, you remember the scene in, uh, ghost where Whoopi is sitting down with Patrick Swayze and she's about to do the reading and there's all these people standing around in the room. Yes. That's, that's what happens when I'm about to do a reading. Ordinarily, that's not what happens. You know, like in, you know, while you're going throughout your everyday life, there's not spirits that are constantly following you around. So that's the first thing to realize. I mean, spirits have a life on the, in the afterlife. I mean, there's crystal cities and colors beyond belief, and it's just a really beautiful place over there. But what happens is, is when you start thinking about them, you start drawing their energy closer. So if you're staring at a picture, you're going through photo albums, you're honoring them in some way, maybe celebrating their birthday, maybe you talk to them, because a lot of people do. Uh, and these are all ways that you pull their energy closer. Now, at the same time, having been in spirit, you're omnipresent. So say we were related, and you were thinking of, we'll use Uncle Joe again, and I was thinking of Uncle Joe. He could be with you as well as with me at the same point in time. See what I'm wow. saying? So yeah. they're, they're everywhere. They're everywhere always, and they're mm-hmm. always aware of what's going on, and they're always helping us and guiding us. But that doesn't mean that they're holding our hands through life, you know, and, and constantly around us and, you know. I, I don't know. It, it just seems a little creepy to be knowing that there are spirits looking at you when you're taking your shower or you're dressing or, you know, are they there looking at you going, oh, so that's what he or she looks like. Oh, no, I mean, have like, mercy. Like, 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 what like the I hell said, happened you know, to her? Are they, do no, they I think mean, like that? No, I mean, they have a life on the other side. They have things that they do on the other side. And, you know, and it's not always about you. It's about you when you pull them close to you. Like when you, like I said, odds are you're not in the shower thinking about it you know, uh, somebody that you've lost, unless it's a recent loss. And even then, the shower's not necessarily a place, the bedroom's not a place that they tend to come to, right? So, you know, they're not watching you do the Watutsi, and they're not watching you in the shower, (laughs) you know, and they're not watching you tinkle while you're going to the bathroom. So, you know, I mean, they they do respect your privacy, uh, you know. So, and like, for, for me... My apartment at night turns into sort of like a high maintenance, you, you know, uh, airport, you know, where it's, there's a lot of traffic, spirits are popping in and popping out. And I just happen, I don't have to get up. I just happen to get up and come out and sit and listen to their stories about what's going on with their families and so on and so forth. And that's my way to pay it back to spirit. But, you, you know, ordinarily, I mean, most people don't, wake up and, and hear that type of stuff. So Thank God, it would um, drive me crazy. I, you know, I, I watch those shows and I think, Oh my God, I have enough problems. I could not be listening to all of these spirits. I would just, I, I guess some people may possibly go insane because they have that ability and not know it, but you know what? We have one minute. Can you believe that the show goes by that fast? People always <laughs> think 50 minutes. God, what am I going to talk about? But we're, we have one minute 
minute left. I want to real quick ask you if you would do me the honor of coming back on the show next year. Uh, I'm booked until March. I would love for you to come back on the show next year because I've only gotten through half of the questions. Uh, the other half came from people who wrote in that had questions for you. And I we're not going to get to them because I'm not even through my questions, let alone the questions of, of the people that wrote in. So would you do us the honor of coming back on the show next year in March, maybe? Yeah, that's fine. That's wonderful. And last, I want to thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, anyone that wants to get in touch with William Constantine, he is available for spiritual and psychic counseling. I like him. I get a good vibe from him. I'm a Scorpio. I'm, a, I'm into astrology, William. You're into your spirits. I'm into astrology. So I get a really good vibe about you. So uh, my question is, what vibe do you get about me? Give me one thing to convince me that you know what you're talking about, even though you don't have to. I'm just asking. Well, right. I, I mean, I, I don't need to convince you. I mean, I think that the one big thing with you is uh, that you're a helper. Okay, so you've always been the person who people come and, you know, unload stuff on. You've always been the go-to person for people where they come and explain their life story. In other words, you're the type of person that people just go and, you know, start talking to you about their life story, correct? Correct. Correct. The other thing is, is you have the, the, the problem that you feel like you need to solve everybody else's issues. And so the one big thing is, is I just say take a little bit of time for yourself and be able to, you know, have a woo moment every once in a while. I agree. Now, do I have any damn spirits floating around over here that I should know about? Absolutely, but we don't have time for that, right? <laughs> because we don't have a <laughs> That's a very, very good way to end this conversation. That's for sure. Thank you so much, William. But you did nail that. I am halfway impressed. Now, no, I'm all the way impressed. But uh, I highly recommend that you get in touch with William. Uh, his website is psychicwilliamconstantine.com. I like you. I get a good vibe about you. And I'm going to recommend you to everyone who wants to go see a psychic. And um, anything else you want to tell us before we leave? And everything's good? You are you're, you're got anything coming up? or? Well, I got lots of things coming up. You know, all it's that. All, it's stuff on the up. website, right? Is, yeah, it's, it's all on the website. All so, right. and there's, I mean, there's videos where you can watch me doing gallery readings and stuff. The one big thing that I would say is, if you're going to be choosing a psychic, whether or not you choose me as, you know, a psychic or a medium, uh, you know, I, I'd say that you have to connect with that psychic. There has to be something where there's a connection between you and them. And for me, my website is an extension of myself. So I try to make it very easy to be navigated and to really, you know, bring you into my world and help you understand different things. So if you make the connection with me, then I'd be happy to do a reading. Right on, Psychic William Constantine. Power to the psychics. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm going to contact you next year for you to, to come back. And um, I want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you for listening to Question Reality. Bye, William. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family, okay? Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you. You're listening to Question Reality. Question Reality. With Priscilla Leona. Priscilla Leona. Only on LA Talk Radio.